The Mystery of the Mumbling Mummy. travel through the pipes so people upstairs can hear people downstairs. Right you are, Huckle. Here's your camera, Sally. All fixed. Thanks, Mr. Fix-It. We're going to meet Loli at the museum to see the mummy exhibit. Have fun. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> I see his apple car. But where's Loli? 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 Loli, are you okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> I wanted to see what it was like to be a mummy and I got stuck. <laughs> Sorry, kids, but the museum doesn't open for two more hours. Oh, that's okay. We're the first in line for the mummy exhibit. Hmm, how would you like a sneak preview? Of the mummy exhibit? Yes, please! <laughs> <laughs> the mummy exhibit's upstairs, but as you can see, we still have quite a few items to unload and set up. Using the wagon would be easier. Carrying them is faster. Easier. Faster. <laughs> Do they remind you of anyone we know? Yes. <laughs> they sound just like Pigwell and Pigwoat. <laughs> Always arguing. Last one up is a mummy's uncle. Uh, what, what was that? It wasn't me. It wasn't me either. But if it wasn't us, who was it? The mummy's mumbling! Mummies don't mumble, Loli. Uh, uh, this one does. I think the mumbling sound might be coming from behind the mummy. Let's go see. Bug here. So what's the history on this one, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, we keep hearing strange mumbling sounds. Mummy mumbling sounds. We're going to solve the mystery of the mumbling mummy by finding out where the sounds are really coming from. Okay, ready for it? Here goes! <laughs> for important news updates as Huckle unwraps the mummy mystery. Goldbug out! Now it's that noise. We just heard the news. And we just solved the mystery. You, you did? did? Yes, the strange sounds are coming from... Pigwell's springy shoes! Not my springy shoes, yours! 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 It was
wasn't anyone's springy shoes because it wasn't springy sounds we heard. Yeah, what we heard was more like... Oh. Oh. <laughs> We're going to look for more clues. Want to come along? Yeah! Yeah! How do we stop bouncing, Pigwell? I don't know. I thought you knew! There's that mumbling again. Now it sounds like it's coming from that suit of armor. I think it's coming from behind the armor, Loli. I don't get it. It sounded like it was coming from here. But like the last time, there's nothing here but us. And that haunted suit of armor. Lowly mummies don't make sounds, and neither do suits of armor. Maybe you didn't hear me, Huckle. I said haunted suit of armor. <laughs> what was that? I don't know, Lowly. Let's go see. <laughs> it sure is hot in here. <laughs> well, now we know what the whirling sound is. But what about the other sounds? The mumbling sounds. If it's not the mummy or the suit of armor, what's making them? Hmm. Okay. We heard the mumbling sounds in the two rooms upstairs. Maybe we should see if we can hear them downstairs, too. Let's go! Wait, we're stuck! <laughs> shove over, Big Wall! No, uh, you shove over! Uh, you! Uh, you! Uh, Wait, listen. There it is again. I keep telling you it's faster. And I keep telling you it's easier. No, it's not. It's just the workmen unloading boxes. Mm. Excuse us, have you heard any strange sounds down here? What kind of strange sounds? Kind of like... <laughs> nope. There's no one down here except us. Hmm, interesting. The strange sounds could be heard in both rooms upstairs, but not down here. That's because there's no mummy or haunted suit of armor down here. I think there must be another reason, Loli. Let's go over what we know. Maybe there's a clue we're just not seeing. But there's nothing there except those air vents in the floor. Hmm. Maybe those vents have something to do with the sounds. I wonder where they lead to. I bet the vents upstairs all lead to that big vent down here. I think you're right, Loli. But that doesn't help us figure out what was making the strange sounds. Hey, what's that? It's Huckle outside Mr. Fixit's place. No, no, that, that thing beside him. Oh, that's Mr. Fixit's fancy new speaker pipe. Voices travel through it so people upstairs can hear who's downstairs. Cool. Voices traveling up through a pipe? I didn't know voices could do that. Wait a second. That hump sounds familiar. Loli, tell me again what those sounds we heard sounded like. I wonder if... Using the wagon would be easier. Carrying them is faster. Huckle, are the mysterious mummies mumbling? No, Goldbug, but the not-so-mysterious workmen are. Huh? Mumbling workmen? But how is that possible? You were upstairs and they were down here. Here's what I think happened. When the workmen moved under the big vent in the delivery area, their voices must have traveled up through the big vent to the little vents in each of the rooms upstairs. 
Just like Mr. Fix-It's speaker pipe. Only we couldn't hear their words clearly. That's why it sounded like spooky mumbles. The humph sound was the workmen grunting every time they put down one of the heavy boxes. Exactly what I was thinking, Huckle. But how can you know for sure? We can test it. Sally, Loli, go upstairs and see if you can hear me. Can you hear me, guys? We sure can. But you sound mumbly. M -m 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 Mummies? Right! <laughs> <laughs> so Huckle was right. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one two. Hooray for Huckle! Well, that wraps up the mystery of the mumbling mummy. Go bug. <laughs> Mystery. Will, okay? No, I won't. I'm gonna be the fire chief. Says who? I'm older, so I should be the fire chief. <laughs> Two minutes older. And besides, all fire chiefs can do cartwheels. <laughs> can you? No, but all fire chiefs can stand on their head. Can you? Oops. Hi, Big Will. Hi, Big Will. Hi, guys. Cool fire. Truck. We're yeah, firefighters. firefighters. You are. Uh, don't you need special training to be a firefighter? We have been training. Listen to our emergency sound effects. <laughs> Look, there goes the real busy town fire truck. <laughs> Find out! Hey, wait for us! We're firefighting professionals! Whoa. Oh no! The fire's at Ellie's ice cream shop! Oh. Wait, stop! There's no fire! Nothing burning in there. Who called the fire department? I did. My smoke alarm was beeping like crazy, so I thought there was a fire. But then it just stopped, so I guess there wasn't. Her smoke alarm went off, but there wasn't a fire? If that's not a... Mystery! I don't know what is! Busy Town Action Bug News! <laughs> this is Goldbug, reporting live for Busy Town Action News. I'm at Ellie's ice cream shop, and the burning question is, where's the fire? Actually, Goldbug, there isn't one. Ellie's smoke alarm was beeping like blazes, but nothing was burning. It's a mystery, and we're going to solve it. Woo! Yeah! Yippee! <laughs> Hooray! Ready for it? Here goes! <gasps>
Buckle and his team are going to solve the false alarm mystery. Stay tuned. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. <laughs> well, team, it's time to An get... An ice cream sundae? <laughs> hmm. Okay, and then we'll get Busy Town. What do you say, Lily? Ice cream? Sure. Let's chill out. <laughs> Oh, boy! Our first big emergency! Let's get in there and show them how it's done, Pinkwill! Oh, We missed everything! Ooh! Barbecued barbecue burgers! Me first! No, me first! Uh -huh. Me first! No, me first! Me! Me! Me first! No. Smoke alarm again. Everybody outside. We're on. Mm. Don't panic. We're fearless firefighters. Everybody put on your life jackets. Huh? That's what you do in a boating emergency. Oh, right. I knew that. Hey, listen. The smoke alarm isn't beeping anymore. Just like last time. Hmm. And there's nothing burning, just like last time. Hmm. If there's nothing burning, then maybe there's something wrong with that smoke alarm. But how do we know for sure? Let's take it to Mr. Fix-It and find out. Yes, he'll know if it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Loli. Pig will, pig won't. Can you two stand guard and be on the lookout for any sign of fire or smoke? Sure we can. We're the best smoke-smelling firefighters in all of Busy Town. <laughs> Right! If we smell smoke, we'll raise the alarm! Beep, 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 Okay, that's beep, good. Beep, beep, beep. We'll hurry back as fast as we can. Come on, team. To Mr. Let's Fix -it. roll. A faulty smoke alarm, you say? Well, we'll soon find out for sure. Safety first, kids. What's up there? Smoke. Well, not yet, but there will be soon. Watch this. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> See how the smoke rises? That's why you always put smoke alarms up high near the ceiling. Looks to me like your smoke alarm works just fine. If the alarm is working, that means there must be smoke in Ellie's ice cream shop. Hmm. But the firefighters didn't see anything burning. And neither did we. Well, you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And where there's fire, you need a smoke alarm. I know. Not a pair of silly pretend firefighters sniffing for smoke. Come on, we've got to get this back to the ice cream shop right away. We're back! Finally! I've been sniffing so hard for smoke, I got a cramp in my snout! Me too! I'm glad you got that smoke alarm fixed! Actually, we didn't get it fixed! Huh? Okay. Why not? Because it wasn't broken! Really? Really! It works fine! So the false alarm mystery isn't solved yet! I'll have that smoke alarm back on the ceiling in a jiffy, everyone! There is smoke up here. Yum! And it smells good. What does it smell like? Hamburgers. Hamburgers? Hmm. That gives me an idea. Aha! Here, Lily. Could you put that back on the ceiling? Thanks. Where are you going? To order a hamburger and solve a mystery. Yay! 
Ahem. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. Goldbug here, reporting live from Ellie Elephant's ice cream shop. Tell us, Huckle, has the smoke cleared in the false alarm mystery? It sure has, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. Both times when Ellie's smoke alarm went off, there wasn't anything burning inside. At first, we thought Ellie's smoke alarm must be broken. But Mr. Fixit's experiment proved it was working fine. Then we discovered that there really was smoke in Ellie's ice cream shop. And it smelled like hamburgers. And the only smoke that smells like hamburgers is... Where there are hamburgers cooking! Right here beside the ice cream shop. Are you saying that this barbecue out here is making the smoke alarm go off in there? We're about to find out. One hamburger, please. See? Smoke is going in that open window. Then it rises to the ceiling where the smoke alarm is. And listen for it. Great work. Well, there you have it, folks. Huckle and his team have done it again. The false alarm mystery is solved. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Hooray Huckle! For Huckle! I am so grateful to have that mystery solved. I'd like to stay and chat, but I've got a window to shut. And we've got ice cream sundaes to eat, remember? Well, <laughs> gotta go! Off to the next emergency! <laughs> hmm, something tells me our ice cream sundaes have disappeared. Yup, and by the ice cream all over Pig Will and Pig Won't's faces, I'd say we've already solved the missing ice cream mystery! <laughs> <laughs> The Missing Cookie Coupon Mystery. Mmm. Smells like Mr. Rabbit's new cookie shop is open for business. Mmm. I love the smell of fresh baked cookies. I bet it smells even better inside. Let's go see. Ah, you're right, Huckle. It does smell even better in here. Hmm, that's funny. I thought this was a cookie shop. But there's a big pretzel in the window. <laughs> huh? Lolly, what are you doing in there? Hmm, you know I love the smell of fresh baked cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, kids. Welcome. Whatever cookie you want is yours, if you'll just give me your free cookie coupon. Free cookie coupon? What free cookie coupon? Yeah, what free cookie coupon, Mr. Rabbit? Like this one. It's good for one free cookie. I mailed them out to everyone in Busytown to celebrate the opening of my new cookie shop. Wow, that cookie coupon looks good enough to eat. Then just think how good the free cookie will taste. Me first! No, me first! <laughs> Didn't any of you get a free cookie coupon in the mail? Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you mailed them, Mr. Rabbit? Yes. Junior here took them out and put them in the mailbox himself. Didn't you, Junior? Yes. Me put them in the red box. Me big boy. Yep. That's the red mailbox, all right. Then why hasn't anyone come in with a free coupon? Sounds to me like we have a missing cookie coupon. Mystery on our hands. Busy Town Action Buggies! Yay! What's in the cookie jar on this one, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, it seems that the free cookie coupons that were mailed have mysteriously disappeared. So we're going to solve the missing cookie coupon mystery. And just how will you do that? By finding the missing coupons. What else? Makes sense to me. And I do believe that's our cue. A one and a two and a here we go!
stay tuned for news updates as Huckle sets out to pick up the crumbs and the clues to deliver the missing cookie coupons on a platter with a side order of milk. Mm -mm, I'm hungry. This is Goldbug signing off for now. This isn't only a cookie coupon mystery. If we don't get our free cookies, it will be a cookie coupon catastrophe. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Pig will and Pig won't. Huckle will find those coupons. You bet, Loli. We already know two things for sure. One, all the coupons were put in the red mailbox. And two, none of them arrived. Now the question is why? Maybe Mr. Rabbit forgot to put addresses on them. Or he forgot to put on the stamps. Good suggestions, guys. Both those things will keep the coupons from getting to where they were supposed to go. How about it, Mr. Rabbit? All the coupons had addresses and stamps on them. I even double-checked. Okay, so now what's our next step? I know. Where does the mail go before it gets delivered to everyone's houses? The busy town post office. That's a great place to start looking. I'll bet the missing free cookie coupons are still at the post office. Me first! No, me first! <laughs> May we borrow that extra coupon? Sure you can. Good luck, kids. To the busy town post office! Hurry! Boy, <laughs> I didn't know Pigwell and Pigwell could move so fast. <laughs> they can, but only when there's a fire or free cookies. <laughs> This mail is going to be a bigger job than we thought. We checked every single piece of mail in the whole place. And we didn't find one free cookie coupon. That means... <laughs> we'll never get a free cookie. Relax, guys. Those missing coupons have to be somewhere. Sally's right. Okay, here's what we do next. Um, what do we do next, Huckle? Well, the Busy Town Postmaster is the boss of the Busy Town Post Office. Let's go ask him if he's seen them. Exactly what I was gonna say. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Postmaster. Have you seen a bunch of coupons like this in the mail? Sorry, Huckle. I don't remember seeing any mail here that looks like that. But if they never arrived here, where could they be, Mr. Postmaster? Well, the letter carrier might know. He's the one who picks up the mail from the mailbox outside Mr. Rabbit's shop. Good thinking. Let's go ask him. He might be a little hard to find. He could be anywhere in busy town delivering mail. Don't worry. If anyone can find him, we can. We know the streets of busy town like the back of our hands. Uh, oh, <laughs> I mean, your hands. Do you see him? I don't see him. Nope, me neither. No, I don't see him either. This way. What about here? Look, there he is. You can't fool us. Tell us where the coupons are and we'll let you get back to work. We want our free cookie coupons. I never saw any cookie-shaped coupons in the mailbox. If they were in there, I would have seen them. But there wasn't a one, I'm sure of it. No! All is lost! <laughs> <laughs> Especially the coupon! And our free cookies! <laughs> Good luck with your search, kids. <laughs> How is it possible that the letter carrier never saw any coupons in the mailbox? I don't know. They look like big cookies, so there's no way he could have missed them. Maybe somebody else took the coupons from the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> yes, someone who really loves cookies. <laughs> <gasps> he did it! He did it! Pig won't! Pig will! Won't! Will! Won't! Will! Won't! Will! I'm sorry, Mr. Rabbit. We haven't solved the mystery yet. Okay, let's go over what we know. 
The letter carrier never saw the coupons in the mailbox, and the busy town postmaster never saw them at the post office. Is it possible that they were never in the mailbox in the first place? But Junior said he put them in the mailbox. Me like red sprinkles. Hmm. Actually, Loli, what Junior said was he put them in the red box. Uh, what's the difference, Huckle? Me like red sprinkles. Do you mean blue sprinkles, Junior? No, red. Huh? <gasps> Junior, do you know your colors? Yes, me big boy. Do you know what color those sprinkles are, Junior? Yes, um, blue. And what color are those ones? Red. I think I've solved the mystery. So how about it, Huckle? Are you ready to sprinkle some light on this mystery? Yes, here's what I think happened. Mr. Rabbit gave the cookie coupons to Junior to put in the mailbox, and Junior said he put them in the red box. But we know that Junior is still learning his colors. He called the red sprinkles blue and the blue sprinkles red. We also know the red mailbox is right beside a blue trash bin. So I think that Junior thought the blue trash bin was the red mailbox, and that's where he put the cookie coupons. In the trash bin? Yup. Exactly what I was gonna say, Huckle. <gasps> hey -ya! Excuse me. Don't worry, we'll clean up when we're finished. Ah, Eureka! I struck gold! Cookie coupons! So there you go, folks! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Great for Huckle! <laughs> Another sweet busy town mystery solved by Huckle. Dog bug out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's mine. Well, after all this detective work, you've certainly earned your free cookies. So please pick any one you want. Mmm. They taste even better than they smell. Way better. Chocolate, vanilla, caramel, oatmeal, raisin, peanut butter. There are so many to choose from. I can't decide which one to pick. Me neither. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> A mystery of the broken boat. My project made it to the craft show without getting soggy. I can't wait to see Loli's craft. He said he was going to make a statue of himself out of ice. Look, there it is. Wow, it looks just like Loli. That's because it is me. My ice statue melted. It melted? Yeah, the sun melted it. Just like it's melting all those icicles. Oh. oh. Now I'm trying to think of something else to make for the craft show, but I'm stuck. Don't worry, Loli. I'll think of something for you to make. No, you won't. I will. No, I will. 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 Hi, Oliver. Are you entering something in the craft show, too? I sure am. It's a sailing boat. It's the coolest thing I ever made. See? <gasps> My boat. Oh, no. What happened? It's broken. How did it happen? I don't know, Sally. It was fine when I left home. Maybe you can fix it. 
Maybe. It looks like the anchor came off, too. It's not on the boat or in the wagon. It probably got lost when the boat got broken. But I don't know where or how it got broken. Then I guess that makes this a... Uh... Mystery! Busy Town Action Flood News! <laughs> Goldbug here with breaking news from the Busy Town Craft Show. Can you tell us about it, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, Oliver's boat is broken and the anchor is missing. To solve the mystery of the broken boat, we have to figure out how the boat got broken so we know where it happened. Then we can find the anchor and Oliver can fix his boat. Whoa! Sounds like you've sailed into a big mystery this time, Huckle. Are you ready for it? Here goes! find the anchor and get his broken boat ship shape again? Stay tuned for important updates. Go bug out! Let's start by going back exactly the way Oliver came. If we retrace his steps, maybe we'll find a clue to help us figure out how the boat broke. <laughs> yes, retracing your steps is always a good idea. Okay, I came this way. Follow me. Watch out for Mr. Frumble's super bushy bushes. I could hardly fit my wagon through here before. Maybe these bushes are why Mr. Frumble's always losing his hat. Hey, maybe that's what happened to the boat. Uh, someone squeezed it? No, maybe one of the branches knocked it over and broke it. Good idea, Sally. But I don't think so. The sides of the wagon are too high for the branches to hit the boat. Which means whatever broke the boat must have come from above. I got it! I got it! You solved the mystery? No. I know what Loli can make for the craft show. You do? What? A bad scratcher! Ooh. Mine's better than yours. See? <laughs> That's not a back scratcher. It's a tickle stick. <laughs> Stop it! No, I won't. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. But I think I'll find something else to make for the craft show. We better hurry. We have to find my anchor before the craft show judges start giving out the prizes. So, something must have fallen into the wagon from above and broken the boat. But what? A street sign? A kite? A hot air balloon? Whoa! Whoa! Who turned off the lights? Hey! A rubber boot? It's in here somewhere. <laughs> hey, Billy, why are you throwing boots? Oops. Sorry, Sally. I've been digging through my trunk looking for my favorite fishing hat all morning. Is this it? Ah, there it is. Thanks, Loli. Billy, is it possible you threw something that accidentally landed in Oliver's wagon this morning? Hmm, I don't think so. But if I did, it would still be in the wagon, wouldn't it? Yeah, that makes sense. See, there's nothing in there except that broken boat and some water. Water? Why is there water in Oliver's wagon? It wasn't there when I left home. Maybe whatever broke Oliver's boat was wet. <gasps> this boot is perfect! Loli, can you use it to make a boot planter for the craft show? No! He can use it to make a piggy boot bank! Boot planter! Piggy boot bank! Boot planter! Piggy boot bank! Boot planter! <laughs> Sorry, but that's my fishing boot and I still need it. Thanks again, guys. But I'll just have to find something else to make for the craft show. Which reminds me, we better hurry up or we're going to miss that craft show. Okay, we know 
that whatever broke Oliver's boat came from above and was wet. What could that be? Let's think. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Ah! Sally, what's wrong? Why are you doing that funny dance? I'm not dancing, Loli. Something freezing cold dripped on my neck. <laughs> Must have been a drip from that melting icicle. Wait a second. The drip came from above, and it's wet. Maybe dripping water broke Oliver's boat. A good guess, Loli, but I don't think a drip would be enough to break the boat. Whatever broke it must have been heavy, too. It came from above, was wet, and heavy. Hmm. Wait, I stopped here this morning. I left my wagon outside when I went in to buy an apple. Do you think maybe your boat got broken here while you were inside? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Loli got dripped. <laughs> oh, that's cold. You'd better move out from underneath in case one of those heavy icicles falls on you, Loli. I have an idea! I had it first! How about this for the craft show, Loli? You can make a drip hat so icicles won't drip on your head. My drip hat is prettier. Mine is. Mine. 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 But what about my boat? Okay, now, let's really think. We know that whatever broke Oliver's boat came from above, made the wagon wet, and was heavy. What could that be? Above, wet, heavy. Above, wet, heavy. Aha! I think I know what happened. Ahoy there, Huckle. Have you put the pieces together and solved the mystery of the broken boat? I think so, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. Whatever broke Oliver's boat had to come from above because his wagon has high sides so nothing could hit it from the side. And whatever dropped on it also had to be wet because there was water in the wagon. And we figured that it had to be something heavier than just a water drip for it to break the boat. When Oliver stopped here this morning, he parked his wagon under the icicles. I think that one of the heavy icicles fell off and landed on the boat. And that's how it broke. But then where did the icicle go? By the time you got to the craft show, the icicle was all melted. That's where the water in your wagon came from. Yes, it melted just like my ice sculpture. But I still have one question. Where is the boat's missing anchor? It probably flew out of the wagon when the icicle hit the boat. If I'm right, it must be around here somewhere. There it is, Goldbug. You parked your nose fan on top of it. Well, then I guess I helped solve this mystery, too. Hooray for me! <laughs> Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! Oh, no. The wood is too wet. The glue won't stick. I can't fix my boat. Uh, don't feel bad, Oliver. I don't have a craft project, either. Hmm. Oliver, I have an idea. I know what we can make for the craft show. That's the best model boat wreck I've ever seen. Actually, it's the only one I've ever seen. But congratulations, you two. How does it feel to win the prize for best craft in show? We, we won, won a prize, prize too! The judges said our drip hats were the soggiest crafts they'd ever seen. But mine's soggier than yours. Mine is soggier than yours. Mine! 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 <laughs> mine. mine. <laughs> the Mislaid Sketchbook Mystery. It sounds like someone's not happy. But who is it? Over there, Lolly. It's Bunny Rabbit. And she can't reach her balloon. 
She can't, Sally. But Jeremy can. I'll get that for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Great job, Jeremy. Being tall must come in pretty handy sometimes. Yep, except when I'm pumping my head. Where are you three off to? We're going to Busy Town Park to meet some friends. I was just there. Have fun. We will. See ya. Bye, Jeremy. Where did Pig Will and Pig Won't say they'd meet us, Huckle? At our favorite park bench, Sally. And there they are. Hi, guys. What you doing? Drawing in a sketchbook that I just found on this bench. You mean that I just found? It's brand new, and there's no name in the front. So now it's mine. You mean it's mine? No, mine! Guys, someone must have left it here by accident. So it doesn't really belong to either of you. Oh. But there's no name in the front, remember? Maybe whoever owns it put their name in the back of the book. I don't see a name. Oh, but I do see some drawings. You, you do? do? Yeah, uh, upside-down drawings. No, wait! The drawings are actually right-side up, and they're at the front of the book. So the sketchbook does belong to somebody, but who? Whoever it is, I'm sure they want it back. This looks like another busy town mister! <laughs> Guys, what are you doing? Sorry, Huckle, but we don't want you to find the owner of the sketchbook. You don't? But why? Because... The owner might get angry at us for drawing in it. Can't we just keep the sketchbook and forget about solving... the mystery? Busy Town Action Live News! This is Goldbug reporting live for Busy Town Action News. What's this about a mystery, Pig Walt? Mystery? <laughs> what mystery? This mystery, Goldbug. Someone lost their sketchbook. We don't know who it is, but we're going to find the mystery artist and give it back to them. Right, guys? Right, right Huckle. Huckle. Ready for it? Here goes! <gasps> Huckle and his team are going to solve the mystery and find the artist who lost their sketchbook. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. I told you we shouldn't draw on that sketchbook. You told me. I told you. Okay, guys, let's get Busy Town. What clues do we have? Well, we have the sketchbook. Hey, yeah. Maybe the sketches can give us clues about who drew them. Baby Robins. They look so cute. <laughs> hey, they even sound cute. <gasps> Baby birds. Maybe those are the same birds the artist drew. Come on. Huh? A bird's nest. But how do we know it's the right one? Yeah, it's way too high up to see the babies inside it. Hey, this bench might help. Nope. I still can't see them. I might, if you'd give me a boost. I see them. Two cute baby robins and one blue egg. Just like in this drawing. So that must be the same nest. But how could our mystery artist draw something that high up? Yeah. I only saw the baby robins because I got a boost from Huckle. And it would be hard to climb that tree holding a sketchbook. Bonjour! We are two famous artists. Have you found a lost sketchbook? Mystery solved. That was easy. 
We really like your drawings. Uh, <clears throat> but how did you sketch the baby robins way up in that tree? Oh, uh, we... Uh, you see, how did we do it? Um, we... Uh, you two look very familiar. Well, not the pig twins. Or anyone else you know. Thanks for finding my sketchbook. Your sketchbook, it's mine. Uh, no, mine. No, mine. <laughs> Pig will and pig won't. Aha! Uh -huh. So our mystery isn't solved. Do you have to find the real owner? Can't we just keep it, please? Sorry, guys. We said we would solve this mystery, and we will. I told you your idea wouldn't work. My idea? It was your idea. So we still don't know how the artist drew something so high up. But we do have one more drawing to look at for clues. <gasps> A red flower box with three petunia plants, one pink and two purple. Hmm. I wonder where our mystery artist sketched this drawing. <gasps> Guys, there's a red flower box right across the road. Good eye, Sally. Let's go. Hmm. That looks like the flower box in the drawing. But it's too high up to make sure. Just like the bird's nest. And there's nothing like a bench we can climb on to get that high. What about that ladder? Can we borrow it, please? <laughs> of course, Sally. Be my guest. <laughs> but be very careful and use both hands at all times. Don't worry. I will. I see them. Three petunia plants. One pink and two purple. Yep. One pink and two purple petunias, just like in the drawing. So now we know our mystery artist likes to draw things that are high up. But we still don't know how. Hey, Sally used a ladder to get up that high. Maybe the mystery artist did too. Good thinking. I bet this is how the artist drew these petunias and the baby robins. Whoa! Gotcha. Woo. Thanks, Loli. Well... Now we know that our mystery artist didn't use a ladder. Yes, it would be impossible to draw when you need two hands to hang on. Oh, so we still haven't figured out how the artist got up so high to make these drawings. Or where the mystery artist is now. And there are no more drawings in the sketchbook, so no more clues. <laughs> I'll get that for you, Bunny. How about a lift, Tucko? You're welcome. <laughs> I may not be as tall as Jeremy Giraffe, but I do okay with a little boost for my friends. <gasps> Loli, you just gave me an idea. Come on. What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> I'm not sure, but let's find out. Whoa, who lives here, Huckle? Our mystery artist, I think. Goldbug here, reporting from a very tall house. Have you drawn any conclusions about the mislaid sketchbook mystery, Huckle? You bet, Goldbug. Here's how I figured it out. By looking at the drawings in the sketchbook, we figured out that all the things our mystery artist drew were high off the ground. At first, we thought the artist used a ladder to see that high. Until Sally proved how dangerous it would be to draw on one. Then, after we got Bunny's balloon down from the tree, Loli said something that reminded me how someone else did the same thing without any help. Someone who was at the park just before we were. Someone who is tall enough to draw things way up high without using a ladder. Hi, Jeremy. Did you lose something? My brand new sketchbook. I was just about to go looking for it. So you're the mystery artist who draws things that are way up high. Yep. I draw in my sketchbook down here, but I see things up here. There you have it. Huckle and his team have reached new heights by solving another busy town mystery. Everybody all together solved a mystery.
mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray for Huckle! <laughs> yeah! Hey, it looks like someone else drew in my sketchbook. Oh, well, uh, you see, uh... Excuse me, children. Have you seen my sketchbook? Hey, don't you mean my sketchbook? Guys, we found the real owner. And he saw your drawings. He, he did? did? Yep, and I love them. You're not mad at us? Nope. In fact, I'd like you to sign your names so everyone will know who drew these wonderful pictures. Huh? Oh, I get to sign first. No, me first. Me. Me. No, <laughs> me. 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 The Hot and c c, -C cold Mystery. Tell you exactly how hot it is. One thermometer coming up. Uh, it's too hot for me. Who wants to go for a swim in our pool? I do, I do, I do, I do. Hey, nice matching bathing suits. We aren't wearing matching bathing suits. We're sharing one bathing suit. It's our dad's. Why are you sharing a bathing suit? Because someone forgot our gym bag in the locker room at our last swimming class. No, you did. No, you did. You did. You did. Hey, I've got an idea. We can watch you argue in the swimming pool where it's nice and cool. Okay. okay. Great. Come on, everybody. Let's go get our bathing suits. Ta-da! I am so ready to go swimming. Ooh, if I wasn't so busy, I'd join you. Hey, Mr. Fix-It. Yay! My air conditioner is here. Sorry it took so long, but ever since this heat wave hit Busy Town, I've had hundreds of air conditioners to install. Wow! That's a lot of air conditioners. No wonder it took so long. So how does it work, Mr. Fix-It? Well, I just set the air conditioner in your window, and it works a lot like a refrigerator. Only instead of keeping your food cold, it makes the air in your house cool. You just turn the knob to the small snowflake to make it a little cold, or to the big snowflake if you want to make it really cold. That's easy. Thanks, Mr. Fix-It. Who needs snowflakes to cool down? Well, we can go swimming. Come on! Let's go! Why don't you take turns and do both? Okay, ready? One, two, three. <gasps> I'll never, ever share a bathing suit with you again. It's not my fault. You were supposed to wait for me to say jump. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting cold. M me too. S so, so am I. It's just as cold out here. The pool, it's frozen. Ice? In the middle of summer? I think this is a mystery! Busy Town Action, action Bug News! <laughs> Goldbug here for Busy Town Action News. I'm reporting live from the Pig Twins' backyard where a chilling discovery has been made. Chilling is right, Goldbug. The temperature went from super hot to freezing cold while we were swimming. So how do you explain this sudden change in temperature, Huckle? That's the problem. I can't. 
At least not yet. Aha! Uh -huh. Are you telling me this is a mystery? I sure am. But it's a mystery that we are going to solve. Right, team? Yippee! Huckle and his team are going to track down the cold hard facts brrr, to solve the hot and cold mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. Usually the temperature only gets this cold when it's winter. I suppose it's possible the winter has come early this year. Really, really early. Oh no, summer can't be over yet. It's my favorite time of year. Huckle doesn't know that for sure, Hilda. How can we find out? Let's go see Vanderbilt Warthog. He knows a lot about the weather. <laughs> Yay! I'm as confused by this cold weather as anyone. So winter hasn't come early then? No, that would be impossible. We're at the height of summer right now. Besides, it's only cold in Busy Town. It, it is? is? Yes. Haven't you been watching the news? Come and see this. Goldbug here, reporting live from the city limits, where there's a big traffic jam. Everyone is leaving Busy Town to warm up, and then coming back to Busy Town to cool down again. I've never seen anything like it. It certainly has nothing to do with normal weather patterns. Something right here in Busy Town must be making the temperature turn cold. I just thought of something. If you leave a refrigerator door open, it makes your kitchen feel cold, right? Yeah, I guess so. What you thinking, Loli? So, if the door was left open at the Busy Town Hockey Arena, it might make the whole town cold. Loli, that's brilliant. Let's go check it out. Come on. Look! All the arena doors are open. If you guys are here to play hockey, forget it. Yeah, all the ice melted. No wonder all the ice melted. It's cold outside, but boiling inside. Oh, tell me about it. Do you have some heaters turned on? That would make it hot. No. In fact, I had Mr. Fixit install two extra air conditioners to make it super cold inside. But it just keeps getting hotter and hotter in here. That's why I opened all the doors, to try to let some cold air in. One thing's for sure, something else besides the arena is making Busy Town cold. Right, Sally. We need more clues. There's got to be something out there putting the big chill on Busy Town. Look, the library has its doors open, too. Just like at the arena. Let's check it out! Wow! It's hot enough in here to roast a marshmallow. I don't understand it. Even the air conditioner that Mr. Fixit installed doesn't seem to be helping. Hmm. The arena has air conditioners, and it's really hot there, too. Maybe we should turn the control knob on the air conditioner to the big snowflake, just like Mr. Fixit showed us. Good thinking, Loli. That ought to cool things down in here. That's strange. Where's the knob? Huh. Maybe this air conditioner doesn't have one. Look! There's another air conditioner on the post office window. And it has a knob. Hmm. Why would it have a knob on the outside? I'm not sure. Come on, let's take a look. Goldbug here. I mean, 
Goldbug here, reporting live from the library with a hot news update. Tell us, Hucko, have you made any progress on the hot and cold mystery? We sure have, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. The hottest day of the summer suddenly turned cold. But Vanderbilt explained that it wasn't because of an early winter. Then we thought all the cold air might have been coming out of the hockey arena. But we discovered that the arena was really hot inside. The library was also hot inside. And that's when we realized that both the arena and the library had just had air conditioners put in. But the air conditioners didn't have knobs on the inside. They were on the outside. So what I think happened is that Mr. Fix-It must have put all the busy town air conditioners in backwards. Instead of blowing cold air inside, all the cold air is being blown outside. There you have it, folks. Huckle and his team have solved the hot and cold mystery. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. I guess I was in such a rush to install all the air conditioners, I forgot which way I was putting them in. Now that all the air conditioners are put in the right way, Busy Town should be back to normal. Hot on the outside, and nice and cool on the inside. We're going for another swim. Want to join us? What a sure. You bet. You guys aren't sharing a bathing suit again, are you? I'm still wearing my dad's. And I'm wearing my mom's. 